What's this, a commission miter bench? Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So that's right, a commission miter bench. Uh, now in all fairness, uh, the person who's getting this bench is a family member and they're not really a woodworker, but they have a miter bench, or they have a miter saw that they want a a nice home for along with a lot of storage and everything else that comes with a nice miter station. So, uh, all Baltic birch, 20 feet long, uh, pretty standard depth. We'll do the adjustable shelf in it for the saw. Um, I have a picture I'll put up here on the screen of what we're building. Um, and I went ahead and I made a cut list for this one just because it's easy to do in SketchUp. And I pre-cut all the parts. I'm not going to do plans for this one. Uh, if somebody really wants my drawings and stuff, uh, reach out to me via my email in the show notes. I'll send them to you, no issues. I didn't do any joinery. It was just there to grab some measurements. Um, pretty much the same construction as my miter bench, uh, just not quite so many bells and whistles as my miter bench. So we're going to cruise through this 20 foot miter bench and we're going to do it in one video. Uh, might be a little on the long side, uh, but we're going to skip a lot of the, the fine detail. I might spend a few more minutes on the adjustable uh, miter height shelf than I did on the first video. And uh, so yeah, all the plywood is already pre-broke down. I did that last night. They're all a little bit oversized, so I'll have to be trimmed to final size just before use. Um, but when I get going next, we'll probably going to set up the dado stack and we're going to go after this whole case or this whole pile of case sides and start getting the dados put in it so we can start assembling cases. I need to go ahead and edge band this plywood before I put dados in it. So I pre-cut the strips a little over length. This is just the iron on edge banding, uh, which will be just fine for this project. Just like that, one down, a whole bunch to go.
Okay guys, so apologies for the camera angles. This thing is just so big, it's, it's really hard to get it in. Um, I didn't go show me building all of the cabinets because they're all constructed exactly the same and they're pretty much modular. So they're all, you know, the same width, same dimensions, maybe just slightly different configuration. I have drawers here and then I have a drawer and a door, which we'll get to uh, there. Uh, that end cabinet down there, uh, is essentially the same construction. It's just got more open shelving and it's a little bit longer, uh, but that's really the only difference there. Next up, we're gonna get after the actual saw station and it's going to be on an adjustable shelf just to make life easy to adjust for the saw. Uh, the owner of this bench is running a Dewalt 12 inch compound miter. Um, so it's gonna be a, a pretty healthy size table. We'll head over to the bench and I'll show you what we're doing. Okay, so next up, I made a double layer of three quarter plywood uh, and I made the bottom one smaller by three quarters on each side. The next up, I made these two six inch brackets. I put a row of screw holes in them that will screw into the ledge uh, with glues and screws. And I've set two tracks to cut out. I know these are a little hard to see um, and I made them 5 sixteenths. I'm expecting to be putting a quarter inch uh, toilet bolt into a T-nut, which will mount in the cabinet. Uh, but first I got to get these slots cut out and all I'm going to do is drill the end holes and cut it out with a jigsaw. All right, moving on, I wanted to give a, a little bit more in depth on how this sliding bracket works to adjust the shelf. So I needed a, a couple of numbers first. One, I needed to know what we were gonna do at the top. And it works out the top is going to be a double layer of three quarter plywood and a piece of hardboard. Um, so I've got that number. The next number I needed was the height of his saw. Um, and it's like I said, it's the DeWalt 12 inch, but I called him just to, to double check and, and he came out with three and five eighths is what he needed. So that's actually where I started, okay? Uh, that is, that's this very top line up here. Then I know that the platform is a double layer and the bracket bolts into that second layer. So I had to come down another three quarters or the thickness of my plywood. Um, to account for that. So then I measured down off the actual bracket to get where my hole started in the bracket. And I marked that line on there just so I know I needed to be below this, right? Um, so I came down about another three quarters of an inch and I struck a line because I liked that placement. It allowed me a little bit of up movement, which I knew I didn't need much, but it allowed me uh, a lot the other direction. So, but when I came around here, it hit the glide. Now, I could take that glide off and, and put the T-nuts in and it, and it wouldn't be a big deal. Um, but I have so much room in here, and this is really kind of for fine adjustments, that I just simply came down another three quarters of an inch and got my line. From there, I used the same square that I used to lay out the holes in the bracket to locate the holes in the case. The bracket is exactly the same width as the case. So from here, I'm gonna drill these two holes and then I'm actually going to mount the two cabinets together and clamp them together. And then I'll come back and drill the, through the original holes here into the other cabinet to pick up those holes. And then we'll install the T-nuts. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with a pilot drill in the two spots, and then I'm gonna come back on the inside with a Forstner bit and just recess that nut in there just a little bit, and then I will go ahead and widen out the hole to take the T-nut. I'm also gonna use a square here just to help me keep uh, level and straight on this drill so that my bolt doesn't end up in there crooked.
Okay, apologies for the lighting today. It's super bright outside and I don't have a covering for that door. Uh, next up is the drawer fronts and I'm, I'm just not gonna show me fitting every individual drawer front and every drawer front will get fit uh, individually. I have rough milled all of the stock and so that's all ready to go. And then I've mounted this one, uh, but this is the only one that I've mounted so far. And I, I like to use the handle locations to mount my drawer fronts. So I will put a shim in the bottom and I'll make my cuts or maybe even a hand plane or whatever I need to do to finesse that drawer front to fit. And when it fits right, then I use that handle location to attach that drawer front to the box. This all gets drilled out anyway, so it just works perfectly to hold that handle there. And then I come back on the inside and go ahead and install screws to permanently mount that drawer front there. I don't use glue uh, on my drawer fronts just because I want them to be replaceable later if they need to be, or you know something moves or, or whatever needs to be done. So I'm gonna get after all of the rest of these drawer fronts. I'm really trying to keep this in one video, so I'm not going to video me doing drawer fronts. Um, but yeah, all in set. Okay, so next up, now that all the drawer fronts are in, we're going to go and move on to the doors. Now all three cupboard doors are exactly the same. Um, we're gonna do just a simple shaker style, nothing fancy. Um, I will go ahead and groove these panels, uh, groove them for the panels rather, and I'm gonna go ahead and run them all the way through. It's shop furniture, I don't need to do stops, uh, so that'll make my life a little bit easier. And then I'm gonna use dominoes in the corners to hold it all together, glue it up, and then we'll get to mounting. So let me go ahead and cut all these parts and get the grooving done, and then, uh, We'll move on. Okay, so there it is, got the doors all on, the drawers are all in, I'm still waiting on hardware. Next up, we're gonna go super fast and put a top on this. Again, like I said earlier, it's gonna be a double layer of plywood and a piece of hardboard, and then we'll trim it out with the alder that I have left. Okay, so just like we talked about, I've got the two tops here, and I just sandwiched uh, two pieces of plywood together, and then this piece of hardboard on the top. So this top will be replaceable for them. Um, there's no glue in there or anything like that. It's all just held together with screws. And then I have cut the first piece of trim to go on here, making sure I get my thickness just right. Um, and this will be held on with glue and brad nails. And then uh, we'll get her all finished up. So let me get all this trim on and we'll take a look here in just a minute. Okay, so there's the first half on. I just held it down with a couple of screws for now, uh, just to hold it in place so I can get finish on it. I still gotta put that side on and hold it down with a couple of screws, and then we'll get finish on this. I did come back and soften the edges a little bit with a chamfer bit, uh, just, just to soften these edges just a little bit. So next up, we'll be getting after finish. Okay guys, so there's pretty much the miter bench. Um, I did hit it with one coat of Armor Seal first, just to pop some of that color in the alder a little bit. Uh, and then I followed it up with uh, two to three coats on the drawer fronts uh, with a high performance water waterborne poly. 
and I probably put probably four or five coats on the top. Everything was block sanded 400 in between. Um, now the owners are going to do the bases and I'm going to deliver these tomorrow. I will try to follow up uh, in my quarterly uh, with an install picture but this is pretty much the end of the bench as, as far as my work goes. Uh, the drawer poles still have to be installed um, and I'll probably have to retro later for either pullouts in the cupboards or shelf pins. They weren't sure what they wanted, um, but we'll come back and we'll do that later for them as they need it. And so, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to get this all loaded up on a trailer and get it down the road and get it into their shop. So that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. And until next time, take care.